You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. Time, weather, and... Hey, friends, real quick before we go into this really deep, awesome episode, a uh, little bit about me. I, in my spectrum of ADD, I am slightly dyslexic. And so I realized halfway through the episode, I'm like, I have not been saying these words correctly. And that's like the whole basis of the episode. Uh, I don't need to re record it. You guys understand. Um, and I think it's just as potent. But I wanted to at least acknowledge it so you weren't like, does that, does she really think that's how the word is pronounced? Um, it is sympathetic. It is your sympathetic nervous system, sympathetic nervous system. And it is your vagal nerve, your vagal nerve. Take a listen. Vagal. I even said it wrong. It's your vagal nerve. Okay. I'm not even going to edit that out. That's so good. So I want you to listen to the entire episode and be like, she's, uh, not saying that correctly. Cause that would drive me nuts as a listener. So I just, let's nip it in the bud. It's still going to drive you nuts, but it is your, um, sympathetic, sympathetic, sympathetic nervous system. And it is your, let's play it again. Cause she keeps saying it wrong. Uh, it is your vagus nerve, your vagus nerve. And that is pronounced. Vagal. It's your vagal. So these were, I think, I don't even know what I was saying, but I was not saying it correctly. So just want to nip that in the bud for you. Have a great time though. This episode, we've done it now and it's, it's pretty hot. All right. Love you. Mean it. Hi friends, welcome back to the Rachel LaForce Show. It's me, Rachel LaForce, and this is my show. If you're just joining us, hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, so glad you're here. This is a this is a place of growth. This is a podcast all about honesty and helping us, dare I say, live our best lives. Um, because there shouldn't be any shame around that of like wanting better, of doing better, of achieving more, even if achieving more means doing less. Okay. So this podcast is about finding our growth edges, moving through them. In a nutshell, it's a spiritual podcast from me, a comedian, because healing is hilarious and we have fun, baby. So get on into it. You are joining us for such a precarious uh, episode because this is the second of a three-part series. So last week was all about acceptance. This week is all about our nervous system. And next week will be all about our response and action. So this is called It's Yours, The Business of Leveling Up and Overcoming Self-Sabotage. So many of us are in this space of growth, of expansion, and we're not really used to the freedom of this new way of life. We're not entirely grounded or like locked into if you are a skier, you know, if you have to lock your boots into your skis um, or even like a Peloton or something like we're not entirely locked in yet. Also, I have to share because there's going to be one of you who don't know this. And the rest of you who do, you're going to be like, ah, yeah, I already knew that dummy. I didn't know that Peloton is the name of like the group of cyclists. So if you're watching with the Tour de France or something and like the big like amoeba group of all the cyclists, that's the Peloton. That's why that's called that. So I was like, well, egg on my face. That seems really obvious. Um, But woohoo, she missed it. So anyway, just sharing because maybe now you learned something too. That was like when I learned that New Mexico was obviously named New Mexico because it was literally the New Mexico Mind-blowing stuff here on the Rachel LaFour Show. So this week is, uh, is all about that, of, of learning for us to, to lock in and, and so much of that locking in. So last week was all about acceptance and, okay, we are accepting that it's not us bragging. It's not us, you know, ignoring our roots or, you know, if your family has those, those feelings of like, well, we're not those kind of people, and there's some of that guilt, that shame of like, am I walking away from who my family is? No, you're not. 
No, you're not. You're just choosing a different way of being. And if your family has always done something in a certain way forever, that's great. You're welcome to do something new. That doesn't mean that you're forgetting everything about them and that there isn't something humble and beautiful to take with you from also the way that it's always been done. But we're now choosing to do it a different way, which is simply who you are, what you are here to do. Your gifts are to be admired, to be uh, shared. And so that's what we talked about last week. And this week, is all about working with our nervous system to be able to believe what we are mentally working to accept, right? So I'm always talking about body, mind, and soul. I feel like we hear those three things together all the time. And it's like, yeah, I'm in alignment. Okay. I don't, can I just have like a decaf, double latte, duta? I got to go, right? Like everybody, we're in such a rush. I don't know where the fuck we all think we're going, myself included, but nobody can slow down. And the actual alignment of body, mind, and soul is a place of creating like calm. Like just this morning, I had a show the other night, Vulnerable Share. I had a show the other night and um, it wasn't, like I for, first of all, I've been doing this for so long that even like in my head, I'm like, oh, that was terrible. Like it was still great. Okay. I want to be honest. Like it was still great. We had a good time. Everybody laughed. But I could tell that I wasn't totally in my body when I was there. And so thus I didn't do what I would define as great because I realized I was playing for them. I was not giving them me. And it took me day. I mean, I left that show and you know, when you feel kind of icky, but you don't know why. And it's like, you're trying to process through it. And it wasn't until this morning, shout out Nikki Novo. Y'all know I love her. Go check her out. Um, And she does her, her Monday readings, which I've been watching since, 2020, I think was like maybe when she first started doing them back when she was still reading cards. And, um, I, I get to pop in and catch them now and again. And something that she had said, I don't even remember what it was, but it triggered this thing. And instantly my body knew. And I was like, again, I've done all this work now that almost instantly I can connect with that higher self. And they were like, close your eyes. And I paused Nikki's video and I closed my eyes and like, let my whole body just go loose my higher self was like, get up, integrate this. And so I'm like moving again. I mean, if anybody, this is why I don't need a reality TV show. I mean, to watch this shit, you'd be like this. I don't, couldn't learn anything from this woman. Also, I didn't have a shirt on because I had this shirt on, but I was eating a salad and there was um, oil. It's like my dressing was like a basil infused oil. I'm like, that's going to get on the shirt. So mama's eating a caprice salad with no shirt on. And just then I'm up in my home by myself, no shirt on doing stretches with my eyes closed, you know, can't make this shit up. And so I'm there and I'm integrating it into my body. And I realized in that moment that what used to be my fear of like, I have to perform, I have to do stand up, I have to do comedy in the way that everybody else does it. And this lineup of comics, I mean, oh my God, so fucking good, so fun. And, but all very traditional joke tellers. And I am not that, if that's shocking to you. And I, I felt that, you know, I didn't eat before the show. I was not energetically ready for the show. I, so what I'm doing is I'm masking, right? I get up there and I'm masking. And so again, it was fine, but I allowed my fear of like, well, they've been laughing at what everybody else does. And that's not what I do. I was also headlining the show. I should also, that's imperative for me to let you know that they have laughed their asses off for a full 90 minutes. And now they're about to see me and I panic. Cause I'm like, what if they don't, they didn't, they didn't know that they were coming for me to be like, Hey, the world's not ending. And here's why, right. They just wanted some yuck yucks and they wanted to go home. And of course we had a good time and I still told all my same jokes, but when I do it, not from a place of being rooted in my body, it's only going to be able to penetrate so much because I've decided that I have already put that block up and I've decided I'm only going to give them so much of me. Right. And again, I'm also being, I want to be clear. I'm being so hard on myself. Uh, It was great and it was fun and all the things. Uh, I'm doing so many things. So we'll give some self-compassion. But the, the deeper part of that was I was so grateful when that process of what I've been feeling since I left the stage on Saturday night finally came through. And I was like, oh, it wasn't that you weren't funny. It wasn't any of these things, but it's as simple, again, a body, mind, and soul, Rach. Like, 
I'm so used to disordered eating. I'm going to be totally honest with you, like whether conscious or otherwise, I'm so used to disordered eating that my body now being like, nah, girl, before you get on stage and blow it out of the water for 20 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, like you need to eat and not like a Wendy's burger on the way there because you didn't slow down and make something like you need to be grounded. Like this is the thing. It's not any more of doing this where it's like, oh, we're just going to throw shit at the wall and see what happens. No, every opportunity is an opportunity to give people your medicine. And not everybody's going to want it. Not everybody's going to need it. And that's okay. But that, again, what we talked about last week from acceptance, yeah, my whole body's lit up. What we talked about last week from self-acceptance, which is like those sneaky ways that we self-sabotage. And rather than me going, okay, I mean, Saturday I was so exhausted. Like I said, Caroline, our brand manager was here all week. I was on the couch laid out trying to take care of the boys all day Saturday. So we did the best we could. And that's great, right? Again, that's that self-compassion. But now it's realizing where it's like, nah, girl, you got to eat before you go. You got to get ready. You got to make sure you're prepared. And we give them you. And we go out and we dazzle because that's what we do, right? And so – I'm sharing all of this because again, it's like, while I've had that acceptance piece, like I've known that now where I'm like, I'm not going to try to do what everybody else does. Like all, you know, it's like, I'm going to be uniquely me in all situations. Like I love myself. I'm grateful for my gifts, but that was the, the opportunity where, oh, we haven't fully locked in. We haven't fully locked in all the time and that's okay. So I share that anecdote and that story of myself, A, to hold myself accountable Um, and let you guys know, I also do this work too. And I think that that story will probably resonate with you of what are the ways in which you're doing that in your life. But again, what Nikki's reading today and, and offer me the opportunity and then me taking the second part, which was acknowledging that's what I needed to hear. And I held on to my, to my stomach. That's where our solar plexus are. It's also the part of my body that I tend to hide from or hide the most. And it was like, no, feel it, feel all of it, feel into it. And again, saying, you know, I, I will continue our, I don't even remember what the mantra was. It's already been seven days. I feel like since this morning, but you know, something along the lines where I was like, uh, I will no longer give anything but me on stage. I will no longer give anything but me on stage. And I made myself say it out loud because internally you may believe it. But again, this goes back to that body, mind, and soul. You have to be in full agreement. They do, or it's still, it's not that full lock-in. And so I heard myself say it out loud three times. And I'm like, (laughs) no one is believing that person. I mean, I was like, "Uh, I will give myself me on stage. And it was like, yeah, no one's believing that person, right? And so I had to, I had to say it out loud a few times. And then I had to go back into my body and feel it again. Again, that's what it was like moving my body and letting it permeate and, and move through and feel that sense of safety in my body. That's where this nervous system stuff comes in that so many of our nervous system, I mean, a, your nervous system was made when your mother was pregnant with you, right? So whatever's going on with mom, all of that repressed stuff, all generationally, everything that lives in her nervous system from her mom, from her mom, generations is now been given to you, right? Oh, lucky us. And it's not all bad. It's not all bad stuff. And so knowing that often, sometimes even our responses to things may not be our own. And we don't need to go back at this point in the game of where we are. Again, this is, it's yours. This is the business of leveling up and overcoming self-sabotage. We don't need to go back. You can, but you don't need to spend all the time of journaling. Maybe this thing was linked to this time in the second grade or maybe da 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 it, the things that need to reveal themselves to you will come up for you. Like again, today with that, where I was like, oh, whoa, that's what happened. And that's why I didn't fully feel an alignment on stage. Those, the things that need to come through for you, the things that you need to become conscious of will rise to the top. They will make their way through. Um, but I think with that is we do really need to dial into our nervous system. And so many of us when we talk about our body, we don't spend a lot of time with our body because we either, again, we participate in disordered eating or uh, binge eating, which is also another form of you know disordered eating, or we go the opposite way, which is like the orthorexia. And it's like, you're watching everything that's in your body. And it's like, no, you don't understand. Like I'm eating all organic and da, 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 da. Like true, I know it gets a bad rap, the idea of intuitive eating, because that can also go into the realm of calling it intuitive eating and it's still restrictive eating. 
And again, I hesitate always to talk about things around food and body because they're very, very sensitive to us, especially as women. So I'm not saying this is true for everyone, just giving you my take, okay? Um, but when we really begin to listen to our body, our body will tell you exactly what it is that you want or what you're craving, which the number one example we can always talk about as women, right, is typically during our um, menstrual cycles, you may crave greasy or fattier foods or maybe some like really grounded foods, maybe like char like chocolate, dark chocolate, right? There are things that naturally, or even pickles, some people are really like their body's uh, hormonal makeup craves like kind of that that dill, so there, that's the perfect example of like, when you're paying attention to these cycles and what's going on in your body hormonally or otherwise, your body will tell you exactly what it is that it needs. We just have to get to a place where we are in tune enough to listen to what it truly needs. Because if like with me, where it's like, I'm used to disordered eating where even if the narrative wasn't like, don't eat this because then you'll be skinny. But even if it was like a lot of times for me, I'm too ADD to slow down and make myself a proper nourishing meal it takes thought. It takes time. It's asking me to slow down. So it was easier for me. Like, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll drink coffee till 7 PM and then I'll just, you know, I'll just shake all day long and then I'll, you know, eat a burrito at nine and then we'll be good. Like, so when you, it's scary sometimes when you really listen to what your body is asking you for and you're giving it that. If you're used to eating less and your body, you're realizing it's needing more, right? Or when you're used to overeating and then it's like beginning to listen to when your body's full, all of these cues. And again, why, why I talk about um, eating and nourishing our bodies in relation to our nervous system is so many of us, our nervous system is even fried that we can't even feel calm enough to get to a place where we can hear what those cues are from our body, right? And I've been talking about this, you know, in dribs and drabs here on the other episodes of uh, it's shocking to me, the amount of intelligence and knowledge that my body has for me now that I'm making more space to listen to it, where I'm like, wow, when I actually get really fucking good at this, I'm like, I can't believe I'll be like, hold on this, this wisdom and like literal, just like internal GPS system has been here the whole fucking time, the whole time, the whole fucking time. Like, are you kidding me? You know, just like, because we don't. A, we don't value women's bodies. The narrative is changing, but we value a woman's body as an ornament, as sex, as you, you're a woman. I don't need to tell you um, the experience. But, um, and even if by chance you're a man listening to this, I mean, same thing. Probably if you were really true with yourself, you would go, well, yeah, that's kind of what I thought about for a while, right? Like, and there's no shame in that. That's also what you were taught. You are also a part of this you know, patriarchal society, don't listen to yourself, don't pay attention to your feelings, keep going, keep going, keep going. And, you know, none of us are immune, haha, uh, no pun intended, to this fast paced world that we've created. That's what's also difficult about listening to your nervous system and giving yourself a fighting chance to really transform your life is paying attention to your nervous system, eating intuitively, paying attention to what you need is the absolute antithesis of every single thing that you are being shown all day long, every day, even the good stuff, right? If you're on like, you know, health talk or whatever, like all your, it's like, you need this supplement. No, try this supplement. You know what changed my hair? You know what changed my face? Now I can sleep all the time. You know what? Now I sleep less. Now I, like there, now that we're inundated with like, here's everything that fixed us, which is beautiful, but also to slow down and be like, well, what do you need for you? And it may be a lot to get started. And then the more you may, you'll need less, you know, like you'll need less and less. And nobody can teach you that except you. I mean, I want to be very clear about this of like, I don't mean for this, for my offering here today to seem vague, but it's more where it's like, I can't do that work for you. The best I can do is show you what has worked for me be raw and real with you about the things that have trans, you know, transpired in my life and trust that that sparks that true honesty in you that awakens that like, uh Oh, right. And then you can begin to fill in those pieces for yourself. And so I, I also just want to acknowledge that of like, this episode is not meant to be like, so you've been doing it wrong, <laughs> right? Like I'm almost fucking 40 years old and I'm like, Oh wait, I should listen to my body. So it's more about 
wanting you to begin to notice how much distraction there is that is distracting you from being able to intuitively hear your body's intelligence. That's the first step. Because when we're still taking on the weight of the world and everything else and everything that's coming at us and how fast and all of the things, we're not in a position to be able to hear ourselves. Because that, that would be like walking around downtown Manhattan with your phone all the way down and being like, what? What did you say? You're not going to be able to fucking hear somebody. There's the volumes on up on your phone and you're in the middle of Times Square. So what you have to begin to do is imagine yourself as being someone that's standing in the middle of Times Square and you're going, okay, I'm noticing that this screen is playing nonstop. I'm noticing that there's these ads all the time. I'm noticing that this feels like it's being projected from my family. I notice that this thing is begin to notice what is in your Times Square. What is constantly, what are those old stories? What is everything? What is the too much on social media? What is just all of the distractions for yourself. And maybe some of those you can eliminate or you can mute or just turn down the volume. And even if you can't, that's okay too, right? Like I have a very vibrant, loud life. There's always a lot going on and moving and changing. So I'm not always able to be, and I'm also not choosing. I could choose to be like, we're cashing in. We're wrapping it up. We're selling off all of our assets. We're buying, you know, land in the middle of Montana. We're going to live off the land. And like, that's how we're doing it. That's a choice. I could make that one. I know for me and what I'm here to do, that's not the choice. So I also know that at any given time though, when it's like, okay, Rachel, we need you on this thing. Rachel, we need you on this thing. Okay. You've got to run this thing. Like running two full-time businesses and nurturing two children and nurturing a marriage. And then oh, God bless taking care of myself. It's a lot trying to nurture friendships, grow a business network, do all of these things, move your body, eat well. It's a lot. And so we just first have to become aware of what those distractions are and where they are in our life. And when it gets too loud, I know how to mute those things so that I can come back into my being and go, okay, what do we need right now so that we can take care of us and keep moving forward? And that's a practice, right? All of this is a practice. And it's something that you're going to do over and over and over again so that that becomes a muscle. Because if you're like me, you know, it's it maybe it's getting easier for me, which is exciting. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to feel like, what will this feel like in 10 years? Like, oh my God, so exciting, right? Because the best thing about all this work, this is very much like the AA of it all of like, it works if you work it, which is like, what a fucking guarantee, you know? I feel like so many of us are like seeking control, even when we're like, no, I'm ethereal and like, cool, uh, fuck that. All of us want to know what's going to happen. We all want control. We all, you know, um, and so that's such a beautiful, the freedom of all of it, of like, no, it really does work if you work it, right? So yeah, you may be where I was six years ago where I'm broke, I'm living in an apartment with somebody I don't get along with, and I'm reestablishing my entire way of being. And so the noise was a lot different, right? It wasn't quite as noisy as it is now. So wherever you are, especially if you're just getting started in this journey, what a beautiful place to be. Because now it's like you, not only that noise may be from, you know, past experiences, the people that used to be in your life, all of these things, and you're already going to be in this process of shedding and letting that go. So you may be in a position where like you can actually get it really what a beautiful place to be. So that's kind of this first part of all of this is just bringing to our awareness like, okay, last week we did acceptance. Excuse me. This week we are going to look at what are all of our distractions? How do we hear ourselves? Do we hear ourselves? How do we identify with our bodies? Because until we even have that conversation, frankly, and this is just my hot take, um, really beginning the work of retraining your nervous system to feel at ease is going to be so much fucking harder because you like when, before I got sober and I was living with my boyfriend at the time, I would go to bed and my body sounded like this. <laughs> my nervous system was so shot from trying to give me every bell and whistle to be like, girl, get the fuck out. Like, what are you doing? Wrong way. You are going the wrong way on the freeway. Um, and I mean, I could not, and that's just how I was living. 
I mean, I could not imagine. You could see me as I'm like moving my body because just even the thought of that, I'm like, oh my gosh. Versus now, if I start to get a little anxious, I feel it right off the bat. And sometimes that's good and we can transform that anxiousness into excitement and so on and so forth. But I wasn't even able to identify feelings within my body because my nervous system was so shot. So I think there's a lot of work to be done here. You guys know I'm a big fan of somatic work. Um, it's such a great tool and way to work with your body and really releasing a lot of trauma in your body. Spinal energetics is another one. I'm like a huge proponent of it. If some of this sounds like, you know, um, hogwash to you, totally fair. I, I maybe have told this story on the podcast before, but I stumbled into body work on accident. So I was like you, I'd kind of like read about body work or whatever, but I was like, yeah, I don't think there's like stuff in my body. Like I feel like I'm like pretty fucking aware of all my problems, right? Because I'm like freshly sober, like broke, driving around and like, you know, my Volvo convertible being like, yeah, I'm aware that like my life is kind of a piece of shit right now. Um, there's nothing I'm like not aware of, right? And then um, I was doing personal organization at the time to pay the bills and I – uh, received this new client. And in the event, somehow she listens to this podcast, I'll speak lightly, but she was a character. Okay. But that was her big thing was, um, she worked with a lot of athletes and different stuff. So she would really work on like the fascia within, um, your muscles. And she did all of this different like body work just in general. And so she asked me, she was like, would you be willing to trade? Like rather than me like paying you, I can trade you in body work. And at the time I was kind of curious about it. And so I was like, yeah, sure. Y'all, this woman lays me on the table and a little, a little kooky or not. This woman was a healer. She lays me on the table and starts digging in to the fascia between my like breastbone and my shoulder right here. And I burst out crying, like trembling. And I, and I was so embarrassed because I'm like, oh my God, what is happening? Like I was not prepared. I don't think she was either. And she, to her credit, was so wonderful to me. And she was like, it's totally okay. If you have stuff you need to say, you can talk out loud. You can just cry. It's totally safe. And I felt all of this, I mean, going back to like fifth grade and feeling taller than all the boys. And so it was like always hunch over the idea of being small, hunch over. I had boobs before everybody hunch over, you know, holding on to all of this fear and there was a lot of sadness around uh, like different relationships in my life and all this stuff that I had held here. Sure, I was aware of it. I was in talk therapy, but that release was unlike even to this day, like it's probably similar to if someone's like, no, dude, like that was like the mushroom trip to like change my life, dude. Like that's how it felt where I'm like, I do body work and now I do a lot of body work on myself with different modalities and things. And I've had some beautiful, beautiful breakthroughs throughout my time, but that was the most paramount and life-changing moment where I really realized like, oh, this, this journey is much deeper and much longer than, than I was prepared for. And so I just share that of like body work is real. Um, and so, yeah, there's like the somatic and energetics, uh, spinal energetics can do a lot of that uh, release for you and really getting all that deep, deep stuff out. Um, there's also a book that I love. I believe it's in my Amazon storefront. We'll link it. Uh, the body keeps score or the body keeps the score. And, uh, it's all about, it's very scientific. So for my friends that like want to know all the scientific things that my brain does not, um, retain, uh, she couldn't even retain the word retain. It's fantastic. It is a deep read. So it's also a good one, I think, for folks like me where it's like, get it, get it on tape, listen to it on tape. But it will, especially for those of you that if you've had any physical trauma and things like that, it is, it's just, ugh, it's so good. I, I, I really, really recommend it. And now I know a lot of you even do a lot of nervous system work. Like you're totally hip to it. Maybe, you know, are well, even more versed in all of this than myself and uh, the ins and outs of it. So, you know, really what our nervous system, the, the easiest way is it's, it's fight or flight, right? What are the things about our body that we know where it's like, oh, typically this is my trauma response, or this is my response when I get uncomfortable or so there's, that's kind of the number one thing we know. Maybe, you know, about your vagal nerve, maybe there's like different 
you know, things that you may be aware of. Um, but there's so much to discover, but it's really even just as simple as like, when you feel that your shoulders are tense, can you relax your shoulders? Can you relax your jaw? Can you, I mean, you probably, I move a lot when I'm talking. I move a lot when I'm even doing the podcast. And so much of that is because there's so much energy and stuff moving through my body. I like to really move it and get it out. So even that deep breaths are a huge way to like, you know, reset your parasympathetic nervous system and just come back in. So that's so much information, I feel like, and I could really get into the nitty gritty of the nervous system, but I think um, we'll do more podcasts, obviously, on nervous system health, what that means. I can get somebody uh, on the podcast to talk all about, you know, somatics and really kind of get a deep dive into all of this. Um, but for today, I'm just wanting to bring to your awareness the power that exists within your body, that when we do that work, the acceptance is not enough, frankly, that the acceptance is truth and that's what should feel like calm. And when that is not connecting and living in our body, then it's just thoughts, right? And meaning like in the same way where maybe you're somebody that struggles with anxiety or intrusive thoughts or, you know, oh, maybe this is going to go wrong. It's not going to go right. Like, that's not truth. It's just a thought. And so in the same way that you may be like, you've got your vision boards, you've got, this is why people who are stuck in that wheel of manifestation and no, nothing is working. It's like, yeah, cause you just like cut some shit out and put it up in your room and you're like vision board. But if it's not living in your physical body, it's just not going to come through. Um, or it will come through, but you won't be able to seize it because you're not in a place that you feel safe enough and comfortable enough to go out and get it. Now I'm not saying any of that of like, so honey, like that's why it's not working for you. Like that's not the vibe. Okay. It's more just going again, this is completely available to you. So if you've been feeling like you're kind of stuck in just like the first step of manifestation or making the life you want, any of those things, I really encourage you to get in touch with this body stuff because that is the, the only part of manifestation that lives on a physical plane is our fucking body. And it's the number one thing in all of this processes that gets ignored. Because that's why, honestly, so much spiritual healers and spiritual teachers drive me fucking nuts. Because I'm like, cool, but we don't live with the Palladians. We don't live on a different planet. Like, we're here. We're human for a reason. And the way to change this world, and for everyone, it's like, it's a new earth. Great. Then we need to be in the world acting and creating and making that thing. Cool? Capiche? So that's my big fish to fry, where I'm always like, guys... We got to bring it back down. We got to anchor it here, right? So all of my big visions, all of my things, every beautiful, oh, I'm going to, oh, wow, I see it now. I'm going to do this thing. It doesn't mean dog shit if my body doesn't believe it, right? Full circle. Let's go back to kind of the intro of the, the episode when I'm talking about my, you know, this morning being half naked and, you know, spontaneously doing stretches and shit in my living room, talking out loud to myself. And you know, of really hearing myself saying that I will no longer give an audience anything but me when I go on stage. So it was like, I had to say it out loud. My body had to feel me save it, say it. And my body had to feel me believe it. That's the difference. That's where those synapses, that's where it all changes because it's your, your mind and what you're wanting to process meeting with your body, right? So it's like soul is up here. It's going to drop it into your mind and then you got to connect it with your body, right? Or maybe even all of that knowledge already lives in your body and the disconnect is your mind because your mind is still going, oh, well, I don't know, or oh, you're subconscious, right? But when we do, 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 when we align all of these things, and friends, this is like a journey, okay? So this is not a thing that like, I don't want you to feel like you did a couple mantras and, you know, shook around and touched your belly and like shit's not working. And you're like, she lied. Like this is an ongoing process. But the more that you do it, like I said, if you work, if you work it, it works. So um, I just was going to click quickly leave you with a few things about um, the actual scientific uh, kind of break down of the three states of our nervous system, just to give you a little bit of that knowledge as you move through the week. Uh, and then if you feel like this is all really resonated for you, I encourage you to go check out my Substack. First of all, Rachel Force on the Rachel Force show on Substack. It's free. Go subscribe. Be a part of the community. Come on. What are you doing? Um, and then if you feel inclined, I would love to have you in our paid subscriber community. 
Uh, it's not that I want all of your money, but I want to be able to do more of this. And the way that we do that is by taking your money. That's right. So please invest in me. I show up. I want to invest in you every week. I would love uh, your investment. I would love to have you in this community. Um, so every week there are bonus features that go along with the episode, right? So just kind of like more to help you through each week. And the paid, it's only $9.99 a month. So yeah, I know you're driving and you went, what? That's only nine. I know it's only $9.99 a month. Um, I set it at that price because when I was broke, I needed things that were affordable that could help me change my life. And I feel like 10 bucks a month is doable. So, um, please join us over there. I've got all sorts of, uh, extra, you know, you get a blog post, there's uh, journal prompts. I pop on and do specialty blogs each week. There are bonus videos. Y'all, I have not made a bonus video less than 18 minutes. So it's not like you're paying $10 a month and for five minutes more, you get to see my face. I'm like, Hey, guess what else? And I'm just repeating the same thing. Like these are, it's, it's designed to actually help you change your life. I mean, most of the reason why I make these videos is I talk faster than I think. So I'll listen back and I'm like, Oh, holy shit. Yeah. I do want to change that thing or holy shit. That was also for me. So in doing this work, it also helps me change my life. Um, so anyway, go check that out. We're going to do live Q and A's, uh, breakout groups, all sorts of stuff. So this is not just like, we're not going to be interacting. That's the whole point. So we can build community and really do some cool shit. Awesome. Uh, let's do it. So, uh, go and check that out. But before we leave, yeah, I just want to leave you with a few concepts. This is, this, um, uh, deck is also in my Amazon storefront. We'll link it. My mom actually gifted me this for my birthday. And this is 58 practices for calm and change. The Bali, uh, Bali, the Polly Vagel, uh, card deck. So this is all about, um, working with the different aspects of your nervous system. So this is just a few of the important concepts and things to think about. So, the automatic nervous system not only controls our vital body functions, but also is at the heart of our daily experience. It influences how we live, work, and love. It guides the way we move through the world. With the development of the polyvagal theory, Stephen Porgs, Porges, Porgy, guys, hooked on phonics did not work for me, reconceptualized how the vagus nerve works. He identified a ventral vagal branch that supports regulation and a dorsal branch that triggers immobilization and disconnection. This updated understanding of the automatic nervous system outlines three response pathways. The sympathic, which is just fight or flight, dorsal, which is the shutdown or collapse, and then your ventral regulation. When we are anchored in regulation, we move through our days with a sense of safety and successfully meet the ordinary challenges of life. So I'm just going to read the three states. So if you're like a note taker, this is, this is for you. Also, um, the pictures of these cards and so on, all this information will be over on the Substack as well. So these are the three states that uh, Stephen broke down. Ventral. This is at the top of the automatic uh, hierarchy, okay? So this is the system of connection. The ventral state is essential for health and well-being. In this state, we feel grounded, organized, and ready to meet the day. Life feels manageable. We see options, we have hope, and we can begin to hear new stories. We connect to ourselves and others in the world around us and to spirit. We are regulated and ready to engage. So this is kind of that top state. Then there's the sympathic. Um, this is one step down on the hierarchy. And this is a system of mobilization. It's in its everyday function. It helps regulate the heart and breath rhythms and brings us energy to move through our day. So in its survival mode, it activates pathways of fight or flight and pulls us into anger and anxiety. So whenever you feel like you drop down, that's in that sympathic state. And then there's the dorsal, and this sits right at the bottom. So this is at the bottom of the hierarchy. 
And its everyday role, it regulates digestion and brings nutrients to nurture us. When active in survival role, it becomes a system of shutdown. We feel drained without enough energy to engage with the world. We collapse, we disconnect, and we disappear. Cool? So just a little bit more on that. I'm really interested to hear all in any of your feedback on this episode there's i mean honestly we could do an entire like eight week series just on the nervous system there's so many healers and teachers out there doing it um and because i'm not it's you know not my number one um i guess you know point of teaching that's why we're not going to do that at this point in the game so there's so many people that, especially on instagram tiktok again talking about that like overload of information but there's so many great people to go and learn from uh, but certainly, you know, even all those people, they can give you information. Again, they can give you the science. They can give you this and that. But really, I think, you know, in the nitty gritty of it, it is interesting and it's all these different things. But at the heart of it, we have to be willing to do the work, which is mostly just slowing down and being able to be with our nervous system. Why does that trigger me? Why do I feel triggered by that? Why, you know, and being able to sit with it and then give it something else. Replacing that trigger with love, replacing that with I'm safe, replacing it, right? Um, so that we're able to naturally begin to calm our nervous system. So I really feel like today's episode gives you a huge jumping off point for that, or maybe a beautiful reminder of that until we integrate and embody any of this, it's just, you know, your 2024 vision board. So I, um, I love you so much and I'm, I'm so proud of all of the work that each of you are doing in the world. And I know that this is not easy and, you know, it's still different or whatever, but, um, it's so fucking worth it. And I'm, I'm really proud of you. So I'm so grateful that you guys show up for me each week and you listen and you DM me and you let me know what's working for you. And, um, it's really just, it's honestly like an honor. It's just really fucking cool. And I feel like we're just getting started and, uh, you guys are my OGs and I, I just, I couldn't thank you enough. So thank you for being here. Go check out all that stuff on Substack. I've actually got a two card pull from this deck. So go and check it out. I'm going to kind of breathe and read into that energy of what we're really needing to support us. Uh, if you feel called to this deck again, it's in the, uh, Amazon or it'll be in the show notes. Again, there's a few other healers that do spinal energetics and things like that, that I like. I've, I've found a lot of, um, information. I've learned a lot from their accounts. So we'll drop that, uh, in the show notes too, to kind of give you a couple other places to, uh, sink your teeth into. All right. That's all I got for you. Be well. Again, this is the three-part series. It's yours, the business of leveling up and overcoming self-sabotage. Week one was acceptance. Week two this week, we talked all about our nervous system. And next week, we're talking about beginning to put that into action. So creating new responses that are rooted in new action. That's what we're going to be talking about. So glad you're here. All right. Get out there. Love you. Mean it. Time, weather, and